Welcome to the Leading Edge Podcast with Eric Thompson. Inspire, perform, profit. Hey, how's it going, everybody? Welcome to episode number 26. Thank you, as always, for tuning in to the Leading Edge Podcast. This is your good friend, Eric. How about we talk about, in this one, my five favorite words, okay? My five favorite words, and these are, if you're in sales, you know what, we're all in sales. If you're in sales, these are the five most powerful words you will ever use, you will ever say, you will ever employ in your sales life, in your sales career. And isn't it true that we are all salespeople? Aren't we all selling something, even if um, it doesn't say salesperson on your business card? Gosh, even if you're retired, you're still a salesperson. We're all constantly selling our ideas. We're selling ourselves. Uh, we're selling ourselves to our kids, to our spouse, to our parents, to our friends. We're selling ideas. We're selling concepts. We're selling, um, hey, how about we go out to dinner tonight? Or how about we go on this vacation? The point is, we are selling ourselves all the time. We're selling our kids on, hey, uh, how about you go to bed now? Uh, how about you uh, eat your broccoli and not that cookie, right? We're always, always selling, okay? So I learned along the way in my career the five most powerful words uh, I've ever learned in sales. And I've, as I've taught people these five words, I've noticed just huge transformation, a huge shift in how they even think about sales once they start to use these words and get good at these words and also really understand the philosophy behind these words. Before I tell you what they are, because now you're like super curious to hear what these words are, before I tell you, I'll tell you first that what I notice in uh, salespeople commonly, and of course I work with realtors all the time, I coach and work with a ton of realtors, a fear that I notice quite frequently is the fear of being cheesy. So I notice if you're being cheesy, being pushy, being salesy, you know, no one wants to come across that way. No one wants to be that guy. No one wants to be that woman. No one wants to be perceived that way. And there's this really, really, really strong aversion to that. They never, ever want to be perceived that way, especially among their friends, but really among everyone. But it especially comes up among their friends. Uh, by the way, side note, whenever I notice that a realtor is not willing to engage with their friends. I know that this dynamic I'm talking about is going on. It's a fear of being pushy, being salesy, fear of being perceived as that guy within the circle of their friends. They don't want to do that. So this can really be in the way. It can really be a hindrance, of course, to having sales success. If you're not even willing to talk to your friends about real estate, you know, how the heck are you going to build a successful business if you have that fear, if you have that block uh, going on, all right? So the fear, again, is being cheesy and pushy and salesy. No one wants that, of course. And you know what? The client doesn't want it either, all right? So it's a legit fear because the client never, ever wants to be in that kind of interaction. And we can probably all think about those kind of interactions that we've had in the past. We're, we're in front of a really cheesy, you know, very stereotypical used car salesy salesperson, okay? And that is no fun at all, right? It's really uncomfortable. It's it's weird. It makes my skin crawl. Uh, all I'm thinking is, all right, I want to quickly get out of this situation. I'm really uncomfortable. And I think that's a very common reaction. So it's natural that people would, would feel that way. So here, here it is. The cure to being pushy, the cure to being salesy and cheesy, the cure to that, the opposite of all those things is to be helpful, all right? So what's the opposite of pushy? What's the opposite of salesy? Well, the opposite is helpful. So if you want to be helpful, you use the five words. And here are the five words. Drum roll, please, with no further ado. Here are the five words. The five, five words are, would it be helpful if? Would it be helpful if? Those are the best words to use, like of all time in any kind of sales situation, whether it's a prospect you're meeting for the first time, maybe it's like you're a realtor and you meet someone at an open house, or it's a longtime friend and they happen to be mentioning real estate or their curiosity about real estate or they're thinking about moving. And instead of being all locked up in fear about, oh my gosh, now I, I hope I don't come across as salesy, but I do want to help them out. I do really want to, I hope this can turn into a transaction for me, but I don't want to be that guy, you know, <laughs> instead of being caught into that kind of um, disempowering loop, you just flip it around and be helpful and you just offer up a, would it be helpful if. 
Now, I'll tell you, there are a few things that are real brilliant about the phrase, would it be helpful if? A few things that are brilliant. Brilliant thing number one is the fact that it forces you to be empathetic. It forces you to be empathetic. Now, all of you listening, you don't need a whole lot of help to be empathetic. All of you are naturally empathetic. You wouldn't be tuned into something like this anyway if you weren't already empathetic. So I'm not saying that you need to trick yourself into being empathetic, but what's great about would it be helpful if is it really causes you to consider what would be helpful. It causes you to get inside the head of the person that you're talking to and, and to see the world through their eyes, to feel even what they're feeling and to ponder and think about, okay, given their situation, given what's going on in their world right now, given everything that they're faced with, what is it that really would be helpful? And isn't that a great thought? Isn't that a really powerful thought to have? Uh, isn't that a cool thing to look at uh, through, you know, seeing the world through the eyes of another person and to consider what might be helpful. So then you get to offer up that thing. So again, brilliant thing number one is it forces empathy. It forces you to see the world through their eyes. It forces you to really consider what would be helpful to them as opposed to immediately jumping what we want to get out of the situation, right? So that's easy, right? That's a knee-jerk reaction for us to go to our needs, our wants, our desires, and to just drop them into the conversation, but that's not gonna be relevant to them. There's no way to be of true value to the other person without considering what might be helpful. So again, what it be helpful if forces empathy. The brilliant thing number two about those five words is that by definition, it causes a next step. By definition, a next step is, um, it is put into the situation. Here's what I mean. So when you say, would it be helpful if, you're gonna offer up a specific thing and if you've done a good job of considering what might actually be helpful, they will say yes to the thing that you just promised. Now you have to go deliver on the promise. Now, by definition, you're going to be getting something into their hands. And not only is that the next step of getting the thing into their hands, but then you can offer up a chance to have a dialogue, have an interaction about the thing that you are getting to them. So a really good example in real estate is what we call the CMA, of course, right? So we all know about that. A CMA is a comparative market analysis, is a CMA, and of course, we try not to use those words with a client because it's super jargony. But uh, let's just pretend that you're interacting with a friend and they're bringing up a whole lot of questions uh, about real estate, about what the market's doing. They're talking about what they notice in their neighborhood and all the sales that are happening or maybe not happening. And they talk about uh, the house right next door to them that just sold and they heard it got multiple offers, right? They're, they just, and they're clearly intrigued. They're clearly interested. And you're not exactly sure why yet, but they're clearly intrigued. So great would it be helpful if is to say, um, hey man, you, you sound pretty intrigued about what's going on in the market, what's going on in your neighborhood. Would it be helpful if I put together a little snapshot to show you what your home is worth today? And, you may not even be thinking about selling, which is fine, but I do it for my clients all the time. Would that help you out just to see what's going on in your neighborhood and also to see what your home might be worth in today's market? And then you say, you know what? I do this for my clients all the time. I'd be happy to do that uh, for you. So would that be helpful? Okay, so that's a specific example. And if you've done a good job of listening and done a good job of presenting the thing of value, they are gonna say yes. So in that situation, my friend's gonna say, yeah, actually, yeah, Eric, that, that would really help me out. Then I said, great, be happy to do it. I'll put that together for you. And um, you know what, let's just get together real quick on the phone because there's always some interesting little nuggets and, and takeaways and interesting things that I notice when I put these together. So let's commit to get on the phone together so I can just walk you through what the ahas were for me when I put that together. Just take a few minutes. When would be a good time uh, to do that, right? So you can immediately turn that into an, appo an appointment in a nonchalant way, in a value-add way, you know, not in a pushy way at all. So that is an example of how would it be helpful if, number one, causes you to get inside the head of the other person, and then number two, causes you to put it into a next step, all right? So hopefully this, this is helping you, pun intended, hopefully this is helping you so far. The other thing I'll share, I'll share a couple more things. Uh, the other thing I'll share is the phrase, and you heard me say it in that role play dialogue, the phrase I'd be happy to is a great phrase to use in conjunction with would it be helpful if. And you can use that in, in either order. 
uh, you in the situation I talked about with, with my friend who's intrigued about real estate in his neighborhood, you can describe the CMA and then say, you know what, I'd be happy to put something like that together for you. Just take me a few minutes. I do it all the time. Would it be helpful if I did that? So you can do it in that order or you can do it in the reverse order. So you know what, um, what I do for my clients a lot is just give them a snapshot of what's going on in their neighborhood so that they can see the recent sales and even see what their home is worth in today's market. My clients tend to really appreciate it. Would it be helpful if I do something like that for you? Uh, you know what, I'd be, I'd be happy to do that. So you can use it in that order as well. The order doesn't matter, but those two phrases really go nicely together. I'd be happy to, and would it be helpful if? Now, thing number two I wanna share with you is are the, are the words that really make my skin crawl. So the words that are the opposite of would it be helpful if, and you're gonna chuckle when you hear this, the words that are the opposite of would it be helpful if are the words I would love to, <laughs> all right? The words I would love to. And here's the thing about that phrase. It's meant with a ton of sincerity, right? So uh, like all the, all the, you know, the intention of that phrase is, is great, it's positive, it's pure because you really would love to, you really would love to put together a CMA uh, for that person. But it's the thing is, it's the way it comes across. It comes across all wrong. It comes across in a cheesy way. And if you could see me, you would see me kind of um, with one of my eyes partly closed and my fingers kind of making a, a you know, a, a stereotypical kind of gun motion, kind of a pointy, you know, and my head's kind of bobbing back and forth and say, yeah, I would love to put together something like that for you. You just come across as such a used car salesperson when you say that. And I want to acknowledge again, I know it's said with the best of intentions. I get that because you really would love to. That really would make your heart feel good because you really do want to serve that person. But the problem is it comes across in the wrong way. It comes across as cheesy. And the other problem with the phrase is it's so focused on you. It's so focused on you and what you would love. I've gotten to the point now when people say it to me, what I hear them say is, yeah, what you know what you would really love? What you would really love is my money, <laughs> right? You would love some of my money. That's how it comes across to me when someone says I would love to. I will tell you, I get this phrase said to me or emailed to me all the time. I get pitched all the time. And uh, gosh, not to, uh, I don't want to pick on uh, loan originators and, and title reps. Uh, however, <laughs> I do hear this phrase frequently from them. And oftentimes it comes up in email. I'll get the email from the loan originator. I don't even know. I don't know him from Adam. I've never heard of them before. They're a total stranger. And I get the email that says, hey, Eric, I'm so-and-so. I'd love to buy a coffee sometime. Tell you all about the things that that I do. All right, that that comes across as so self-serving to them. It's so them focused. It has nothing to do with me. What may be helpful to me. What might help me out. So the phrase I would love to is terrible. Here is the worst version that I ever got of this personally. All right, the worst. Here's the worst version. I was interacting with a gentleman that owns a home inspection business, and this was after one of our. Uh, big events that we host. We do a big market forecast every January. He was in attendance and he kind of caught me afterwards. He was, I'm visiting with him one-on-one. -on -one. Nice enough gentleman. I'm sure it's a very successful business, but here's what he says to me uh, pretty early in the conversation. He says to me, hey, Eric, I'd love to get together with you so that you could tell me how I could get more business from you. <laughs> I'll say that one more time. He says, hey, Eric, I would love to get together with you so that you could tell me how I could get more business from you. And in my mind, I was thinking, I wish that I could write down what you just said and then show it back to you. And then have you consider if that was a, a really good thing for you to say, was that helpful? Was it helpful? Was it value add? Um, or was it cheesy and pushy and salesy? And of course that phrase didn't work. Of course um, I didn't commit to getting together with him because it had nothing to do with me. He would have done been so much better to ask me a ton of questions about me, my business, what's going on, and then and then consider what might be helpful to me and then offer that up. So a takeaway from this is be very conscious of the phrase, I would love to replace that phrase with, would it be helpful if, combined with, I'd be happy to, it's gonna come across so much better and you're really gonna see the world through their eyes, you're gonna get inside of their head, all right? So that is your lesson about the five most powerful words in sales. I'm hoping this was helpful 
to you. And something else that may be helpful is for you to check out The Leading Edge. The Leading Edge Inner Circle is a place where we take a deep dive on all things just like this and give you more dialogues, more useful phrases to use. Go check that out at jointheleadingedge.com. And as always, thank you so much for engaging with this podcast. I'll catch you in the next one. In the meantime, enjoy life on The Leading Edge.